Robert Stevenson and Company was a locomotive manufacturing company founded in 1823. It was the first company set up specifically to build railway engines. Topic: <laughs> Foundation and early success. The company was set up in 1823 in Fourth Street, Newcastle upon Tyne in England by George Stevenson, his son Robert, with Edward Pease and Thomas Richardson. The manager of the works between 1824 and 1825 was James Kennedy. The company's first engine was Locomotion No. 1, which opened the Stockton and Darlington, followed by three more Hope, Black Diamond, and Diligence. Their vertical cylinders meant these locomotives rocked excessively and at the Hetton Colliery Railway Stevenson had introduced steam springs, which had proved unsatisfactory. In 1828 he introduced the experiment with inclined cylinders, which improved stability, and meant that it could be mounted on springs. Originally four-wheeled, it was modified for six and another example, Victory, was built. Around this time, two locomotives were built for America. The first, a four-coupled loco named America, was ordered by the Delaware and Hudson Railroad. The second, six-coupled and named Whistler, was built for the Boston and Providence Railroad in 1833. The Rainhill Trials In 1829, the company built a new, experimental locomotive to enter in the Rainhill Trials. Rocket had two notable improvements, a multi-tube boiler and a separate firebox. Rocket won the trials and convinced the directors of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway to use steam locomotives on their railway, and to order these locomotives from Robert Stevenson & Co. Rocket's cylinder were originally angled at an angle of 45 degrees, but were later moved to be horizontal. The Invicta was the 20th Robert Stevenson & Co. locomotive, and was built for the Canterbury and Whitstable Railway. Its cylinders were inclined, but moved to the front end. In 1830 came the Planet class with the cylinders inside the frames, followed by the patentee which added a pair of trailing wheels for greater stability with a larger boiler. This 2, two, two design became the pattern for most locomotives, by a variety of manufacturers, for many years. The locomotive, John Bull, built in 1831, was originally of the Planet type, but was later modified. It survives and is now in the Smithsonian NMAH, and is claimed to be the oldest still functional self-propelled vehicle. <laughs> Long boiler designs The increased distance traveled by many trains highlighted problems with the fireboxes and chimneys. With the cooperation of the North Midland Railway at their Derby Works, he measured the temperature of the exhaust gases, and decided to lengthen the boilers on future engines. Initially these long boiler engines were two, two, two designs, but in 1844, Stevenson moved the trailing wheel to the front in 4 2 0 formation, so that the cylinders could be mounted between the supporting wheels. It was one of these, the Great A, along with another from the North Midland Railway, which was compared with Brunel's Ixion in the Gage Trials in 1846. In 1846 he added a pair of trailing wheels, the first with eight wheels. Another important innovation in 1842 was the Stevenson link motion. Topic. Crampton types Robert Stevenson and Company built a number of Crampton type locomotives for the South Eastern Railway and the London, Chatham and Dover Railway. 
These were all of 4 2 wheel arrangement with inside cylinders and indirect drive. The inside cylinders drove a crankshaft located in front of the firebox and the crankshaft was coupled to the driving wheels by outside rods. They were unsuccessful on the LCDR, and the five Echo class locomotives were rebuilt as conventional 4 4 0 locomotives after only four years of service. Important exports in 20th century The first railway proposal in Egypt came about when Pasha Muhammad Ali asked the British engineer T.H. Galloway to design a railway in 1834. Instructions to make it followed in 1836. Materials were delivered but little real construction followed. No Ottoman Furwan permission was issued and the French objected. Progress was really made when in 1849 Muhammad Ali died, and in 1851 his grandson Abbas I of Egypt contracted Robert Stevenson to build Egypt's first standard gauge railway. The first section, between Alexandria on the Mediterranean coast and Kafr el Zayat on the Rosetta branch of the Nile was opened in 1854. This was the first railway in the Ottoman Empire as well as Africa and the Middle East. In the same year Abbas died and was succeeded by Said Pasha, in whose reign the section between Kafr el Zayat and Cairo was completed in 1856 followed by an extension from Cairo to Suez in 1858. This completed the first modern transport link between the Mediterranean and the Indian Ocean, as Ferdinand de Lesseps did not complete the Suez Canal until 1869. At Kafr el Zayat, the line between Cairo and Alexandria originally crossed the Nile with an 80 feet 24 meters car float. This was the single largest project of the South Street Works. However, on 15 May 1858 a special train conveying Sa'id's heir presumptive Ahmad Rifat Pasha fell off the float into the river and the prince was drowned. Stevenson therefore replaced the car float with a swing bridge nearly 500 metres 1640 feet long. The Egyptian connections to Robert Stevenson were very considerable and a wealth of consequential artefacts are in Cairo Railway Museum. This includes what could well be the single most extravagant piece built by the Robert Stevenson works. This is works number 1295 of 1862 whose artistic design was by Matthew Digby Wyatt. This 2-2-4T for the Egyptian Railways survives with all its fantastical marquetry in the Egyptian Railway Museum at Cairo. It is called the Khedive's Train. <laughs> Into the 20th century Over the remainder of the century, the company prospered in the face of increasing competition, supplying railways at home and abroad. By 1899 around 3,000 locomotives had been built and a new limited liability company was formed, Robert Stevenson and Company Limited and the works was moved to Darlington, the first locomotive leaving the shop in 1902. Most railways in Britain were building their own rolling stock, so most of the output was for export, from 4 to 4 minus zeros for the OUDH and Rohilkhand Railway to GS 4 6 0 and HS 2 8 0 classes for the Bengal Nagpur Railway. These preceded the slightly larger BESA standard designs for the Indian Railways. The works built the first British 2 for the Argentine Great Western Railway in 1905. During World War I, the company devoted itself to munitions work. 
However, between 1917 and 1920, a large batch of Rod 2 and SNCV Type 180 tram locomotives were ordered by the War Office for use on the continent. From then on, business was slack, for various reasons. Notable were 32 mixed traffic locomotives for the GWR in 1921, a batch of 30 tank engines for the LNER and 57F2-8-0s for the Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway. In 1936 and 1937, only 46 were built, including 11 B-17 class Sandringham. 4 to 6 minus zeros for the LNER and 7 to 6 4 passenger tank locomotives for the South Indian Railway Company. Topic mergers and closure in 1937, the company merged with the locomotive interests of Hawthorne Leslie and Company to form Robert Stevenson and Hawthorne's Limited. The company's shipbuilding activities continuing separately. Main line locomotives continued to be built at Darlington, while industrial engines were built at Hawthorne Leslie's works at Forth Bank, Newcastle. In 1938, the goodwill of the Kitson and Manning Wardle companies was bought. During World War II, the plant was fully occupied building O-4-0 and O-6-0 saddle tanks for industrial use, although they did manufacture four PC class 4-6-2s for the Iraqi State Railways in 1940 one of which was lost at sea en route. In 1943, 90 austerity O-6-0 street locomotives were built for the War Department. In 1944, the Vulcan Foundry, which had been formed by Robert Stevenson and Charles Taylor in 1830, acquired a substantial stock holding, and they became part of the English Electric Company. The bulk of the output was for export or industrial use, including 50 South African Class 19D 4-8-2s, Indian YB, YL and WM classes, and 10M Class 4-6-2s for the Tasmanian Government Railways. Domestic mainline locomotives included 35 class L12 64T for the eastern region of British Railways and 100 9400 class O 6 O pannier tanks for the western region. The last steam locomotives to be built were a conventional O 6 OT in 1958 and a six coupled fireless locomotive in 1959. The 4th Street Works were closed in 1960 and the Darlington Works, continuing with diesel and electric locomotives became English Electric Company Darlington Works in 1962. The office block and one workshop of Stevenson's 4th Street Works in South Street Newcastle upon Tyne have been restored by the Robert Stevenson Trust. The trust lost its lease to these buildings in February 2009 following purchase of the whole Robert Stevenson & Co. and Hawthorne Leslie Locomotive Works sites for redevelopment as the Stevenson Quarter. The restored block and several other buildings are protected by listed building status but future public access is uncertain. Topic. Redevelopment Commencing in 2013 the site of both the Robert Stevenson and the Hawthorne Works started to be redeveloped as the Stevenson Quarter. The landlord fronting this operation was initially Silverlink developers. As part of their commitment to the area's heritage they have been hosting a once-monthly opening of the South Street Buildings housing a music, food and drink festival branded as the Boiler Shop Steamer. Councillor Nick Forbes, leader of Newcastle City Council, visited the development on 8 April 2014 to give the city's seal of approval to the project. In the same month the developers Silverlink morphed into the Clouston Group. Topic: 
Topic See also Locomotion number no. 1 Stevenson's rocket Invicta locomotive John Bull locomotive List of rolling stock manufacturers Topic further reading Bradley DL 1960 The locomotives of the London Chatham and Dover Railway the Railway Correspondence and Travel Society. Clothier, Allen. 2006. Robert Stevenson Abroad Egypt 1847-1859. Newcastle upon Tyne, Rocket Press. Hughes, Hugh. 1979. Steam Locomotives in India, Part 3 Broad Gauge. Harrow, Middlesex, The Continental Railway Circle. ISBN 0-9503469-4-2. Lowe, J. W. British Steam Locomotive Builders. Guild Publishing. Warren, J. G. H. A Century of Locomotive Building by Robert Stevenson and Co. 1823–1923. Newton Abbott, David and Charles. Originally published 1923. John Bull, History Wired, Smithsonian Institution.